North Carolina Prepper here. Good morning. I'd like to talk about using people using hand warmers in their food storage as oxygen absorbers. I have one here that I pulled out for uh, example and demonstration. I don't have any oxygen absorbers on hand or I would show you, but I don't. This is not speculation, I'm about to tell you. It's not theory. It is simply math. So, can you use hand warmers as oxygen absorbers for food storage? Yes, you can. But should you? No, because they don't work. Let me explain. <clears throat> hand warmers will not reduce the oxygen levels down to the same proper level that an oxygen, a food grade oxygen absorber will. They're designed, uh, the um, hand warmers are designed to work in a higher O2 atmosphere. They had to redesign the boot ones for the boot warmers and glove warmers to operate at a lower O2 levels enclosed in the boots. These tests were done back in the 90s comparing their effectiveness to the O2 absorbers and then the, the hand warmers came up short. I will never trust them to my food storage. There is a threshold above there's a threshold where, where food uh, is safe. You can safely store it. And above that level of oxygen, oxidation can occur, bug growth can flourish, etc. Hand, hand absorbers, or hand uh, warmers, <coughs> excuse me, will bring down oxygen, will bring down the O2 level. But test results I saw back in the 90s showed it did not bring them down into the safe zone. I did some research. And uh, it might still be up on Walton Feed's uh, archive info. I don't know if they still have it going or not, but we did research back in the day. One of the ways you can test O2 absorbers is you can take a pint, uh, like a canning jar or a pint bottle, and tape the O2 absorber to the, to the roof of the inside. You don't need a lot, but you do that. Set it in a pie pan, turn the bottle upside down, put water in the pie pan, and let it set for 24 hours. The oxygen absorber will create a vacuum sucking the water up into the bottle. You can mark the high level uh, that the water went up with a sharpie and you can use that as a gauge to check it versus your hand warmers. It will be very very close um, in, in fractions of an atmosphere. It will be close but you'll see that the oxygen absorber pulls up more. <coughs> Another thing with hand warmers is you add a lot of unnecessary heat to your food storage and cause it to degrade faster. How much heat? I'll tell you this much, it'll melt sugar, but that's a story for another time. Hey, call me crazy, but I like to know the food that I depend on is going to be edible. I'm going to stick with the O2 absorbers for my food. I'll leave hand warmers in my pockets. I did a quick Google check on these, and guess where they were made at? You know what I'm going to say, don't you? China. That's right. Where all good food grade stuff comes from, right? Not in this house. No way. Uh, there's a company called Multisorb, where I get most of my food uh, oxygen absorbers from. Uh, they only use food grade ingredients. I'm not so sure about the Chinese animals. I don't think those are food grade. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to keep those little little oxygen molecules from reacting with my hard-earned and possibly someday life-saving foodstuffs. I'm willing to fork out the extra pocket change required to do that. I mean, the, the price is really insignificant, and most people use hand warmers because, oh, we can just buy them over here. Uh, Latter-day Saints, last I saw, had 100 packets for like 8 bucks or something. Look them up. You can get on the internet. You can get them cheap. <coughs> anyway, um, the multi-sorb site uh, noted a report that show that states that um, are showing that mold can start in growth in oxygen of point point two percent oxygen. Hand warmers start work stop working in low oxygen orbit low oxygen environments. Their manufacturers even committed. They designed the boot and glove warmers to work in lower O2 environments, and they absorb down to 1.5 to 0.5% oxygen, way above the safe environment. 
Um, <clears throat> they had to redesign them to work in these enclosed or uh, more enclosed environments. The problem is that bacteria, mo mold, and even insects can thrive um, in amazingly low environments. This is where you can get the O2 level down to fractions of percent to have your food storage safe. In this case, you need 0.1% to really be protected from everything. In fact, you know, if, if you guys don't believe me, that's cool. Why don't you go ahead and send an email off to whoever made your hand warmers and, um, you know, ask them. What are you know? What uh, percentage do these uh, draw the atmosphere down to? What percentage? You know, you may do something great and get people a handy source for them. Some people say, "Oh, well, they're hit and miss." That's because they're using glove warmers versus boot warmers. Boot warmers will pull down more, basically, because it's a finer grain of the um, <clears throat> the uh, iron oxide in there or whatever, and it'll give them a um, much more surface area to work with. Now. Give me a second here. Ah, refreshing. <clears throat> now remember this. The burning of any common fuel indeed produces water, which is the last thing you want in food storage. All common fuels are mixtures of compounds of hydrogen and carbon, and when they're burnt, they produce water and carbon dioxide. And O2 absorbers do produce this too in a small amount. But chemical hand warmers come in various types. Some contain oxide iron, iron powder in a sealed pouch and other containers or another container. These react with the iron and the oxygen to produce iron oxide, which is commonly called rust. With very, very little water to no water is produced in that, in that uh, procedure. The iron oxide, though, can be corrosive in the long term. That's why the bags differ in different hand warmers and food grade oxygen absorbers. From cloth in the, uh, the um, hand warmers to micro perforated plastic in the food grade ones so it doesn't contact your food. O2 absorbers for food storage might get a little warm on the counter, but they never seem to get that hot while lying on the table. There's no need for them to react rapidly for the time it takes them when for because the time it takes them to use in food packaging. Hand warmers are designed to react rapidly to keep you warm. It's a different mixture of size, amounts of chemicals. You know, the size of the chemicals, the finer the grain has more surface area to react better with oxygen. Uh, the similar components are also the amount of water in the formula is also different. In hand warmers there's more water. <clears throat> I'll get to that in just a second. Air activated hand warmers contain cellulose, iron, water, water, um, activated carbon to speed, thing, speed up the reaction. Reticulite is the water reservoir. It's a it's like a little type of like a mica, but it holds water. It's used a lot in gardening and hydroponics. And salt is a catalyst to heat it up. They produce heat from an exothermic reaction. Uh, the exothermic oxidation of iron when exposed to air. They typically emit heat from 1 to 10 hours. Oxygen absorbers um, oxygen absorbers absorb for about 24 hours and they do it slowly to produce less heat and less moisture because they are food grade storage. So there you have it and that's the difference. I would not personally use these um, but you know the choice is yours but they're not going to pull it down to safe levels for mold and bacteria growth. All right, North Carolina. Uh, this isn't my opinion. This is facts. <laughs> All right, have a great day.